Good morning again. This is the third week of our focus on stewardship and generosity. Today I'd like to use um, as a sermonic theme, lifting others up, lifting others up. Drake Hardman was a 12-year-old average boy who liked basketball. He was friendly, extroverted, and generally loved people, and he loved being able to make people laugh, except he had one big problem. He was getting bullied in school. This bullying led to injuries. The parents complained to the school, and the kid that was bullying him was suspended. The parents thought that they had a handle on the bullying. They would check in with Drake, but he would often downplay the bullying that was happening to him at school. He tried to overcome the pressure. He could not sway the person that was bullying him. And on one day in February of this year, he asked his parents could he miss basketball practice. The family was out, and when they returned home, they found Drake hanging. He died a day later. As a parent, I have become more and more aware of what is referred to as mean culture in schools. For whatever reason, a weakness is discovered about a kid, and then the kids tease that kid. A few years back, the principal at our school shared she felt there was a mean culture present, and even implied the kids get it from somewhere. As you might suspect, the parents did not take it lightly, and there was a backlash. Instead of kind of hearing and taking it to task that maybe there was some truth, she didn't last much longer at our school. It isn't hard for me to see that school is one of the roughest places in the world, that when we send our kids out to school, we are sending them into some pretty, pretty rough territory. I'm like, if you can navigate public school, you can do anything. But this isn't just about kids, this mean culture. One day after church, some members were sitting around talking. One person in the bunch said, I have observed this over life, in the world and in the church, that folks actually feel better about themselves when they can find someone else to put down. It doesn't matter who, but they need to pick someone out who they think is worse than them, and then conclude, well, I'm not as bad as that person. It makes people feel better. In order to feel good about ourselves, we just find others who are worse off than us. This is where we enter the biblical text today. The Pharisee was like, thank God, I'm not as bad as those people. One scholar describes the passage as a prayer in the form of a tool of self-righteousness. What's in us comes out eventually. For this man, what was in him was self-righteousness. The Message Bible reads like this, the Pharisee posed and prayed like this, O oh God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, crooks, adulterers, or heaven forbid, like this tax collector man. I fast twice a week and tithe on all my income. Meanwhile, the tax man slumped in the shadows his face in his hands, not daring to look up, said, God, give mercy, forgive me, a sinner. Confidence is not a bad thing until it's too much. In our country, because of how we were founded and how we all ended up together, often some folks have way too much confidence and others little. The Pharisee begins his prayer with way too much confidence. Why pray at all since he has it together? He's tooting his own horn. He's listening his own accolades. And to make matters worse, his demeanor makes those less confident around him feel even worse. His attitude is bad enough, but his behavior makes other siblings feel less than. The Pharisee looks down on others, and the tax guy knows it. He feels this disdain. Often our actions do have consequences. Many of us have experienced generosity in our lives. We have been gifted with talents and gifts and skills. We have been 
close to the Pharisee in the sense that maybe we didn't experience a lot of hardship or we haven't traveled down certain roads. We've been able to live a sort of middle-class life. Sometimes when you have lived a certain life, it can be a temptation to look down on others as the Pharisee does. But what if we used all God has given us to help lift someone up? What if at the fork in the road, unlike the Pharisee, we didn't declare ourselves better, but we recognized we were simply spared? Except for the grace of God, there go I. What if we saw an opportunity to lift someone else and open ourselves up to doing just that? When I was a kid, this Pharisee seemed so far away. It was so unreal. He was a jerk. But as I have lived, I realized this Pharisee is not so far away. Perhaps in many of us, some component of him exists. Not visible, but down in our hearts, maybe. Sometimes the gravity of judgment is too heavy to resist. And we find ourselves feeling a little bit too confident in ourselves. The beauty of religion, Christianity is the path we're on, is that it gives us a higher path to follow. When I was in college, there were all these paths across campus in the ground created by students who thought that the C minute path was just too long to get to where we wanted to go. After thousands and thousands of feet on the path, the grass yielded and died and gave way to a path for us to take the shortcut to class. The path today in this text is no shortcut. And this path isn't getting trampled on maybe enough. But it is a path that reflects the kingdom of God where we value one another. Where we help when we can. Where we pray for and with one another. And where we're all pretty much on the same boat if we're honest about it. I'm not better than you, you're not better than me, but we're all on the same boat together. What if we really tried to lift one another up instead of gossiping and talking, the conversations that happen often, too many of them? What if that person who's struggling, we tried to encourage? What if we created space for others to feel as good about themselves as we feel about ourselves? There are a few moments in life, in the days and weeks and months and years, that proceed to build up to some special moment. Weddings, graduation, vacations. For Isaiah Jewett, it was his dream of being an Olympic gold medalist runner. Life was not kind to Isaiah. But he, he had a mom that would encourage him in, to keep on pursuing his dream. There were times when he wanted to give up, and we talked about not quitting last week. And so the day came where he was competing in the 800-meter race that would allow him to continue on in the Olympics. He was so excited, and he could barely sleep that night. The race started, and he's looking like he's going to finish in second or third place, which would definitely allow him to go on, except, except, Nigel and Morris from Botswana collides into him, sending them both to the ground. A lot of feelings came to him in that moment, but he instantly knew that this race was over. In the next second, he's up, and he does something quite unusual. Instead of running to the finish, he turns to help his opponent. He turns to lift his opponent up. And then he remembered something his mother admonished him to do. Finish every race, son. And so him and the opponent run to the finish line, of course, last. On that day last summer in the 2021 Olympics, his dream of winning was not realized. But he accomplished two other things. He finished the race, and he helped somebody, he helped lift somebody else up. Dear God, thank you so much for this congregation and for all the generosity among us. Thank you for all the gifts and talents that you have put in this body. You have put us in such a wonderful place to be such a blessing to others. 
There is so much love in this house. There's so much goodness and kindness. There's grace and mercy, and then there's untapped grace and mercy in this place. Keep our hearts open to your will and way. Help us not to get off onto that road where we declare ourselves better than others. Help us not to take the wrong turn where we somehow begin to think we're slightly better than others. Help us not to take that road where we start judging others' actions without knowing the full story. And whenever the opportunity presents itself, whether we're on the ground or in the desert, help us to lift others up always. Amen.